Let the video commence. Is Tim Burton's The Corpse Bride historically, historically accurate? accurate? Well, uh, I'm here to uh, kind of tell you. We're going to find out if Tim Burton's The Corpse Bride has any historical authentic authentic authenticity authenticity it looks like it does i don't know tim burton's a corpse bride was my favorite burton film as a child i was a kid in the early 2000s i was a 90s baby but let's be honest 97 i remember some things from the 90s but not as much as children growing up in the 90s do. Tim Burton's Corp The Corpse Bride came out in 2005 and it was my favorite Tim Burton film until Coraline came along and I'm only saying that because at the time I thought Coraline was a Tim Burton film as well as many other people out there still today um, it's not it's not a Tim Burton film but when I was a kid I thought it was so um, I guess I can't count that but Corpse Bride was definitely my number one favorite I remember being especially entranced by the character design, especially uh, this lady. This lady will be forever known to me as Pancake, Pancake boobies. boobies. Thank you, Dad, for making that comment the first time I watched it, reenactment. That lady's boobs look like pancakes! That's what my dad sounds like. And I loved and still love Emily's character to this day. I think we can all agree that the corpse bride is deadly gorgeous. Ha. Ha 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 ha. I recently remembered this classic and thought, wouldn't it be fun to analyze the historical plausibility of the character's clothing? Because I mean, it even says on the back of the DVD, who uses DVDs anymore? I don't know, apparently this lady. But anyway, on the back of the DVD case, it says set in late Victorian England and it just so happens to be the perfect time for this subject. Oh, All hail, hail the, the pumpkin, pumpkin king. king. And pumpkin spice, says the little pumpkin child in the back of the room. So at first glance I narrowed down the timeline to somewhere in the later Victorian era. I'm thinking more 1890s, maybe late 1880s, as you'll see because of some of the costumes that these characters are wearing. Do they count as costumes? Do I call these costumes? I mean, these are like stop motion clay figurines. We'll call them costumes. I would like to apologize for my lack of men's fashion. Victorian men's fashion is just a giant blur to me. I like dresses. I'm assuming that the men's fashion is also 1890s inspired because it does seem to look like a lot of the photos I looked up of 1890s men. So let's just go with that. We're going to start with Mr. and Mrs. Everglot. Miss Pancake Boobies, AKA Miss Everglot, has a lot going on. Her sleeves remind me of 1890s mutton sleeves almost, except they're a lot smaller and they're almost like just right at the top. I've seen sleeves similar to that in the early 1990s. So that's why I'm placing it, one of the reasons why I'm placing it in the early 1990s. Her skirts also remind me of skirts from the 1890s. They're not bustled like the decade previous, the 1880s. They don't have tons of boote, if you will. I'm not really sure what's going on with her ladies. Either she's not wearing a corset or she's just a little ahead of her time and she's going for that pigeon-breasted look of the Edwardian era. And Miss Everglot's hair, although fabulous and large, reminds me of something more from the 18th century. Mr. Everglot. Again, I don't know much about men's fashion, but egg that's an egg egg so those were the parents of the protagonist's fiance victoria everglot now we're going to get to the protagonist victor van dort's parents mr van dort again me no know about men's clothes but spiffy hat mrs van dort almost looks 
1880s at first glance, I was thinking that boote has got to be some bustle going on over there. But I'm like, she looks like a curvaceous lady. She looks like she's very confident and curvy. I'm thinking she just might be blessed with that boote. But there were other signs in that dress that look more 1880s to me. So Mrs. Van Dort's dress looks like it's heavily 1880s inspired with her bustle-like butt and her ruffled skirts with lots of layers and flounces and drapery as the 1880s had a lot of. But since I am veering this timeline somewhere in the early 90s, I could say that maybe she just had an older dress from a couple years back, two or three years back. Also, like another 1880s thing is like this tiny hat she has. That's a very 1880s-like hat. This movie seems to be a mixture of 1880s and 90s costumes. It's a stop motion animation, so it's not gonna be exactly historically accurate and it's not claiming to be, so I'm not gonna be too hard on it, but it is interesting to see the historical inspiration in all these dresses. This woman's clothes is a bit out of date and I would like to see her in something more fashionable for the 90s, maybe more mutton sleeves, maybe more of an A-line skirt. I don't know what's the like curving, like it's almost like a mermaid style. Victor Van Dort, the main character, and we're gonna skip over him because I don't know a lot about men's fashion. Mm, spiffy tux. I suppose Victor could be wearing a hat because most people didn't leave the house without hats in the Victorian era. Uh, how improper, Victor. No wonder why her parents don't want her to marry you. As for the lovely Victoria, Victor Van Dort's fiance, at first glance, I was like, this is an 1880s bustle gown. But now that I think about it, I believe she's just that blessed. I wish my attributes were as wonderful as that. Her puffed, small, mutton-like sleeves seem to be 1990s inspired as well as her skirts, which are very like long and I don't see a lot of layers and draping like was very common in the 1880s. I'm thinking this is more 1990s, 1990s, come on Victoria. And the rest of the dress's silhouette seems 1890s inspired as well. I did see this 1870s photo of a dress that looks similar to hers except without the poof sleeves, but that would be way before this time. That'd be like 20 years before and she's also like her family is supposed to be rich so I would think that they would want to look in like the latest fashions and like keep up to date because they're trying to portray this image of being rich when they really lost all their money. <laughs> the Everglots ain't so like high and mighty now. Something I loved to see was when Victoria was getting ready in this one scene, it showed her really cute corset and it looked pretty accurate from like the few details I could see of it. It even had the lacing panel in the back of the corset. However, I would have liked to see the bust line of the corset a bit lower. Her corset seems to end above her bust, but the corsets of the Victorian era and even going into the Edwardian era stopped somewhere a bit mid to below the bust. And it seems weird now, but they looked something like this and hers is like way higher. It's like reaching collarbone levels and we ain't doing that. It's mild support. It's not a whole lot. It's no Victoria's Secret push-up bra. Let's just say that. Unfortunately, she's going to lose a few points because she is not wearing a chemise underneath her corset. And, by the way, I thought it would be nice to insert this clip of cliché painful, painful corset, corset moment. moment. Get those corsets laced properly. I can never speak without gasping. They just always have to add that in, don't they? Even when it's a stop-motion animation. Although tight lacing did exist in this era, it was seen as extreme and vain and Victoria's strict mother would not have approved of it. And now, the lady we've all been waiting for, Emily, the corpse bride. Emily was murdered by her ex-fiance in this lovely ghostly gown. It's hard to tell the inspiration for this dress because it's probably been decaying for 10 plus years. Most of her dress is gone, so it's hard to tell exactly when it's supposed to be from. Emily wears a really cute flower crown and a bouquet made of roses, lilies, and baby's breath. In the song that the spooky scary skeletons sang at the beginning of the movie, they said that Emily stole her mother's wedding dress in order to elope with her 
murderous fiance. So assuming that her age is anywhere from like, let's just say 18, 20 years of age based on like her looks. If I'm going to base this around the early 1890s and she's like somewhere around like, let's just say about 20 years of age and it's her mother's wedding dress, that would be 20 years prior. So this would end up somewhere in the 1870s. And the 1870s wedding dresses that I was able to find don't quite look anything like Emily's. They have long trains, I'll give it that, because Emily's dress has a beautiful, long, flowy, ghoulish, ghostly train, but it doesn't look like the 1870s wedding trains. The 1870s, man, they were going for like, it was Rococo, back with a vengeance. Okay, sorry for the sudden change in setting, but I somehow lost a bunch of footage. But what I was going to go on to say is that I eventually did find a 1870s styled wedding gown that I could imagine Emily in. As we all know, Emily's gown has a strapless bodice with a rather low neckline, which probably wasn't historically accurate to any era, but I would like to keep true to the character's original design and incorporate that aesthetic into the historically plausible gown that I am going to be designing. I will be heavily taking inspiration from this photo of an 1870s wedding gown. I really liked the off-of-the-shoulder look that I feel like matches Emily's original gown's bodice. This version will definitely not be as low as the original bodice, but it will have plenty of ruffles and floral trims and lace, as well as the skirt. Emily's original skirts do remind me of the 1870s natural form era. Unlike the original gown's design from the film, which took more of a simplistic flowy aesthetic, I decided to add a lot more trims and ruffles and things that would be more appropriate to the 1870s style. I gave her some period accurate bangs and voila! A more period plausible interpretation of her wedding dress with an off the shoulder bodice and a very long, beautiful train. I really wish the film had pinpointed exactly what year this was set in. For instance, if they had decided exactly 1893, then theoretically, Emily's wedding dress would have been made, I don't know, somewhat like 18, 20 years beforehand if it was her mother's. And I feel the contrast of her earlier made wedding dress with the rest of the character's clothing would have been a great storytelling device and aid in the overall character. It would have been a blast to have seen Emily's 1870s gown next to everybody else's 1890s fashions. So overall, I was very pleased with the historical influence in this movie. It doesn't have to be historically accurate. It's only a stop motion animation. It's not claiming to be historically accurate, but I thought it would be fun to see the different period inspirations that the creators of this film decided to go for when creating these characters' costumes, their entire identities really. I thought this video would be fun for spooky season, and if you didn't enjoy it, then why did you get all the way to the end of the video? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh dang, I almost forgot about the Napoleon guy. He's Napoleon. That's historical.